in our last video we have talked about the kingdom protozoa and also we discussed the kingdom pangae and in this video we will talk about the kingdom plantae so without further ado let's get started Kingdom plantae. This consists of set of family of green plants. They are multicellular and non-motile. Have a cellular cell wall. They are autotropic and paid by photosynthesis. They can make manufacture their own food. Chloroply in the chloroplasts of the cells. They have chlorophyll, which is chloroplasts of the cell. They divided into three pylon: Talopita, Barophyta, Trachopita. Talopita and Barophyta are non are, are non vascular plants. They are non vascular plants and lack of conducting system. Um, we talk about dust vascular, vascular plants. While Trachopita are vascular plants, well conducting system. When we talk about vascular plant, a plant that can conduct material in from the outside of the from the inside of the body, that is from the stem or from the root up to the body of the stem or shoots. That is conductive system, so they don't have that one. So we are going to talk about pylon talopita, the first one. They are talopites, are also called algae, are simple green plants. All of them are aquatic, reproduced asexually by cell division or fragmentation and spores or spores. Also reproduced sexually by formation of male and female gametes. They have a trait like Pelemintos or plat talus body that don't have a true root stem and leaf. They lack conducting systems. Example are red, brown, or green algae. Mainly a seaweed, except some green algae are found in fresh water. Red and brown algae have other colored pigments. Example of some algae is like the cyanopacopita, blue green algae, or cyanopita. Chloropycopita, that is green algae, and also there is Iglonopycopita, Iglonoid, and also there is Bacillopycopita, that is the atom, and also there is Cryptopycopita, and also there is Rhodopycopita, that is red algae, and others. There is a lot of algae which we will talk about in our next video. Specifically, all you need to do to stay around to subscribe to our channel. So, we will talk about some example of Talopita, most officially simple green algae the first one is spirogera look at the typical cells of spirogera it contains prionoid nucleus cell cytoplasm cytoplasmic strand vacuole cell membrane and other and chloroplasts which means they can manufacture their own food so spirogera is a simple green algae that is found in ponds and ditches it's made of hair like green plaments each plament is made of a single change of identical cells this plant drip passively on water. Another tiny green plant alga is called volbox, which consists of vol, which consists of a bowl of identical cells, each varying flagella. This coordinate beating of flagella bring about a movement of volbox. This is just about some structure of green alga, spirogera and volbox. The next we are going to talk about is Baropita, that is pylon baropita. Pylon baropita, they are the most primitive of the plants. They are the most primitive of plants. Mostly are seedless plants found on the land but in damp, shady places where water is readily available. They are plantain and grow a few inches tall due to the lack of vascular building. Hence, they are non vascular plants. They produce and despise by means of spores. No three size baropite as water cannot travel adequately from root to the top. To the top. They are only plant where gamete of I N stage is dominant and larger than superpropite to N. And classification of baropita. Baropita have been classified into two, Libaward and Moses. Class number one is Heptica and it's example of Libaward. It has a plant body mass resemble the liver shape, hence the name drive. It has a similar structure than Moses. Some say it has a ribbon-like ribbon -like platinum body. It has an umbrella-like structure that produces gamete called saprophyte generation. 
It has a cup-like structure on the talus called gamma cup, which functions in asexual reproduction. Class number two is mosses. They lack vascular bundle and contain more photosynthetic cells in their lips. Have a structure that resembles the lips, although are not true lips, but is called alcohol scales. Conduct water in their steam to only short distance. Here are the characteristics of mosses. Not motile male gamete is called spermatozoa or spermatozoon or sperms, while non motile female gamete are called ova or oven or eggs. It's depending on how you want to call it. So, so now, without being seen, let's talk about some structure of liverwort and um, mosses. Look at this the first diagram is indicating the structure of liverwort. Liverwort. It has an umbrella like structure that produces gamete and is called sapropite generation. As you can see, it's sapropite. And also, there is a, on the talus, there is a cup like structure called gimma cups, which is function in asexual reproduction. This is a typical diagram of liverwort. And there is a diagram of mosses. As you can see here, life cycle of diagram and life cycle of some mosses, spore producing and at the top. Then spores are released, then each can grow to form a new gametophyte and can grow to recycle the regeneration, as you can see here. So this is just short description about liverwort and mothers. If you want full tutorial and full explanation, all you need to do is to subscribe this channel and you can expect our next video. We will upload it and we will make full explanation about it. Let's go to the subphylum that is Pylon trichopita. Um, phylum trichopita. They are vascular plants that conduct water and put they have conducted system, vascular bonding plants. Okay, um, they are the largest group of plants, which include number one, seed plants, familiar with flowering plants, number two, spore bearing plants that bear spores, number three, non flowering plants. As you can see here, let's talk about the first one, Pterodopita. These are also called ferns. Our land plants have a root system and leaves, similar to polarian plants. They possess some character of saprophytes and seed producing plants. They are sometimes called vascular seedless plants. These Pterodopite, they can't produce seeds, they don't have a seed. Spore producing plants. Is dominant saprophyte. They have a dominant saprophyte. Need water during fertilizations, and their stem grow horizontally below the ground, which is also called rhizomes. <clears throat> Small root grow from rhizomes into the soil. Um, farms leaves are also called prawns. That is, the leaves are called prawns. Prawns are called prawns are quail when young and enroll as they grow and mature. Prawns bear spores on the underside. Okay, they bear spores on that size. Prawns branch repeatedly divided into two. Um, it is also called diatomous branching. Conductive vessels present into the roots, rhizomes, and prawns. So here is a typical life cycle of Pterodopita. As you can see, a young gametopita, mature gametopita, egg uh, male and female, male and female. They form zygote, they form after fertilization, they form zygote and they can reproduce young one and the regeneration will continue. So now we are going to talk about spermatopita, that is flowering plant, seed producing plants. They are the seed producing vascular plants. They have well vascular plants. They are more advanced than non-vascular plants and plants. Okay. They are um, well developed root, stem, and leaf, which means they are vascular plants, they have they can conduct anything. Um, seed contain a uh, their seed contain an embryo that develop to form a fertilized egg. Example: All plants we see around us. They are you. They are true plants. No need water for fertilization. Sometimes they divided into two: gynomous sperms and aegeous sperms. So this is Swamotopita divided into two: gynomous sperms and aegeous sperms. Gynomous sperms. They are plant with neck seeds. They have a neck seeds. Don't bear flowers. They don't have bear flowers. Uh, trees, shrubs, mostly evergreen with needle-like leaves. Some like scale-like leaves or broad-like leaves. 
seed are born in special structure called cons. Their teeth is born in special structure called cons. Example, cycads, ginkgoid, and conifers. They make up the world temperate region forests, produce soft wood, which is used for timber wood and paper making. Also, yield, resign, and to painting. Pen, pear, spores, and example of conifers. Look at this carefully. So, these are a spermatophyta and has angiosperms and gynomosperms. Angiosperms, we will talk about angiosperms. Are the largest group in the plant kingdom. They are the largest group. Spermatophyta are the largest group, and under spermatophyta, angiosperm are the largest group. They are adapted to almost every kind of habitats. One of the features of them highly involved when gynomosperms. They are highly involved than gynomosperms. They are highly involved than gynomosperms. Gynomosperms well developed vascular building xylem. That is, we we'll talk about it under flowering plant xylem and proline. We we'll talk about it. True flowers, fruits, and seeds, which are protected within the fruits. Their flowers is protected within the fruit. Mostly crops and ornament plants. Our most example of them are trees, shrub, grasses, and herbs. They are grouped into two. Let me say they divide into two: dicotyledium and monocotyledium. So we are going to talk about this difference between dicotyledium, their structure, and even their features now in this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the notification bell so that by the time you listen to the video, you will be the first one to get notice. So, dicotyledons. These are angiosperms that are the most primitive angiosperms. These are the most primitive angiosperms. They are the largest trees with spreading branches. They are the largest tree with spreading, spreading branches. Bear seeds which have two seed leaves or cotyledons. They have two seeds. That is important to take notes. Vascular buildings are arranged in a regular pattern. These are dicotyledons. Plural part exists in a group of four or five. Their plural part are sepal, petal, pistils, and stamen. Leaves have a veins arranged in a branch network, have a tap root system, and also they undergo secondary growth. Example, Hibiscus, and there's a lot of examples, but the common one is either granon, melon, and yam, papaw, and also copy. Monocotyledons, they are the most advanced plants. These dicotyledons are the most primitive, but the monocotyledons are the most advanced plants. So, high degree of adaptation to their environment, bears it with one cotyledon each. Vascular building of the stems are scattered not like regular pattern. Plural plant exists in group of three or multiple of theories. Leaves have a vein running parallel to one another, not branch, and have a perverse root systems and undergo they don't undergo secondary growth. Example, zemes that have a one seeds and also there is oil palm, there's a lot of them. So now we will talk about the difference between Monocotyledon and dicotyledon. We will compare them and see what will happen. Under seed, monocotyledon has a one cotyledon, while dicotyledon has a two cotyledon. Under roots, monocotyledon has a pebrous root, while dicotyledon has a tough root. Flowers, they are petal in a multiple of trees, while under dicotyledon, there are flowers in the multiple, in the four, they have four or five petals of flower. Under leaf, they are narrow parallel, they are narrow federal beans that is their leaf, while under dicotyledon they are branched, they are not parallel. And under vascular building, their vascular building, as you can see here, is scatter, scattered, that is monocotyledon, while under dicotyledon, their vascular building is not scattered, it's not just like a ring. So how we understand it? Let's talk about the next chapter that is Kingdom Animalia. But that will be in our next video. Thank you for watching. Do have a nice day. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Bye.